And that's because a why never changes. What you can do change with the times, but why you do it never does. That is a little snippet from the book I have here, Start With Why by Simon Sinek. And in it, he explains a little bit about his philosophy with regards to why certain companies are created in, in such a fantastic manner and why they proceed to have such tremendous results and great success over their lifetimes. I came to this book because I quite enjoyed The Infinite Game by the very same author and as well as his podcast with Lex Fridman, which I deconstructed with Juan on, on the main Mere Mortals channel. This book was published in 2009 and explains the difference between yeah, the successful, long-standing, impactful companies and organizations. So it's not just a business book. It does touch on upon a couple of other things, but yes, it is mainly related to business. Uh, and he does this in a qualitative way. So he's not looking at the numbers. He's not looking at the data or the statistics or how much money they made, money, money, money. No, he's looking more at the qualitative things. So, you know, this company did it because they were able to show this or inspire their people in this way and created this type of culture. Once again, it's one of those books where it has many of the stories at the start of each chapter, not necessarily all the chapters, but a lot of mini stories throughout. Uh, as I've mentioned previously, I'm getting a bit over this, but I accepted it for this book because it was very short and the emphasis was just as an example where he would then spend you know, 90% of the time talking about the idea behind it rather than the the story of the, of the company. And... Uh, yeah, so he gave a subsequent breakdown of, of the important points and didn't focus particularly on the certain company. So he would talk about Apple. He would talk about the civil rights movement with Martin Luther King. He would talk about Bill Gates and um, Steve Jobs and, you know, the, all these sorts of things, Harley Davidson, lots of different companies he would talk about, but the focus wasn't on them. It was on creating a, a longstanding company and how one can do this. So the themes of the book, the main theme I would say is the golden circle, which is the why, the how, and the what. So he's created this little little graph, which shows, um, he, he, he shows it in different ways. One is in like a 2D format of sort of concentric circles getting smaller and smaller with the why being in the center, the how expanding out, and then the what being the final one. But he also changes this to show a more hierarchical organization. So it would be a cone going up. So the leader is in charge of the why, sort of the middleman in, in terms of the how, and then the what is the, the product and, and whatnot. So I'll, I'll define these a little bit clearer because that's uh, important to do. So the why, it's the purpose or the cause or the belief. So it shouldn't be changed and it needs to be crystal clear. It needs to be this is why we're doing what we're doing. I'll give an example of all three of these uh, from Apple in a, in a second. The how are the values or the principles to bring your cause to life. So you need to have the discipline to apply your, your, your why and stay accountable to it. And so these should be verbs and not nouns. He gives some funny examples in the book of you know, what would it be like for a, a leader to come up to someone and be like, hey, in this next advertisement, I need more authenticity. I need more motivation. And he was saying, no, no, the, the how needs to be an action thing that you can do. So we, are, we want to create a workplace which is more, you know, um, safe for our employees. We want, um, how are we going to do this? We're, we're going to... Um, be motivating and inspiring by introducing this X thing into our daily lives, whether that be affirmations or probably like it doesn't really matter. The final one then is the, the what. So these are the results of enacting the actions above. So usually it's a product of some sort. It's a computer, it's a mobile phone, it's a bicycle or a motorbike. Um, but it can also be, you know, in terms of a B2B business, a service or a uh, yeah something like that it's maybe something intangible that you're offering uh, and this is the consistent proof of your why so you need consistency on the what level you need discipline on the how level and then you need clarity on the the why so he's got an example here of what what it would sound like for apple to say do it the right way and then do it the wrong way so the right way would be something like this Everything we do, we believe in challenging the status quo. We believe in thinking differently. The way, so this is the how, the way we challenge the status quo is by making our products beautifully designed, simple to use and user-friendly. And then what 
is, and we happen to make com great computers, want to buy one. Now, the wrong way of doing this is saying something like this. We make great computers, they're beautifully designed, simple to use and user friendly. Uh, what, and then people ask, oh, why do you do that? And it's sort of like to make money, I guess. Well, why else would we would? So he was sort of saying the, the difference between companies that stay a long time that create good workplaces and they're not infallible like not all of these companies are the ethically most sublime but the ones who are doing better in general have their why they're very focused on their why and then everything flows from that whereas the other way is 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 acceptable but it's not as great and so this gets into the second point the emphasis so starting with your why is important and he says it's totally possible to go the other way. And in fact, most companies do. Most companies say, this is our product. This is, uh, yeah, this is our product. Look at this beautiful, shiny thing. It's got these X components that make it the fastest, most quickest on the market. We beat our competitors by doing this. Uh, but it doesn't talk a little, you know, they, and then they might slightly talk about the how. So how we did about this is by creating a awesome workplace for people to come work out but then it's the why and the why gets lost and it's not clear it's fuzzy and it's 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 hard to define and it is what knowing why you're doing something is very hard to de, to define you can see this in in your, your day-to-day life you might be doing tons of things where you're like hmm why am i actually doing that i'm, I'm not really sure so he also then talks a lot about okay with the why it's, it's, it's all nice to have your why. I want to um, inspire people to do this. I want to create this sort of thing. In, I want to uh, make sure there are more entrepreneurs in the world because I believe having more entrepreneurs in the world makes the world a better place, that sort of thing. Uh, but having that doesn't abdicate the responsibility of creating a quality product, of actually putting in the hard work and designing the thing. But it would be the differentiator, all else being mostly equal. So you can sort of even get away with having a slightly crappier product if your why is bang on, it's nailed, it's your branding, it's who you are, it oozes out of your essence. And he's talking about this in terms of a company, in terms of organizations, but I think you can do this as an individual as well. I, while reading this, I was applying all of this and thinking, how could this apply to me? I don't have, you know, an employee, uh, employees. I, I don't actually want to be a leader. That's not something that interests me. But I do want to have this sense of of doing the like the most good I can and and being very clear with what I'm doing, what and why I'm doing it. So this is his sort of philosophy. There's the the why, the how, and the what, and you want to get it in the right order. You want to start with the why. You want to go to the how, and then the what takes care of itself more or less. So my personal observations from the book, uh, there were some points where I thought I was deja vuing to create a word. And this, I think, just happens with these types of books. I've read enough now. I've told you, like, these storybooks are starting to get on my nerves a little bit because while reading this, I was thinking, have I read this before? Like, have I read this section? Did I accidentally read these pages already? And it's because when you keep hearing about Apple, Apple is his favorite one. He really loves to talk about Apple and Steve Jobs, but also some of the other companies about Bill Gates, about Martin Luther King. There's, enough, there's so many books which use the style of short, sharp, um, mini, mini explanations to show an idea that it's, it's getting to the point where it's like, man, I've read the story so many different times in so many different ways it's starting to lose the the essence or like the impact that it could have. There was only a little tiny bit about the origins of the why right towards the end as well. And I thought this was actually probably the most important part. Well, you know, you need to start with your why. How the hell do you go about doing that? I think that was done in a purpose, purposeful way because he actually has a book called Find Your Why. So um, that that is probably the reason for that. So this is more of an explanation of, why you should do it in this particular order rather than how you actually go about implementing that in a business sense or in in my case in a in a personal sense so in summary it it initially comes across as the generic sort of inspiring self-help book but 
it made me more absorbed the longer I was reading it and the longer I ingested his philosophy and thought, okay, I think Simon's actually onto something here. So it could be a fluke or it could be his why in action. And so he describes his why as, I wake up to inspire people to do the things that inspire them. That is his why. That That is the why that directs every his reason for writing a book, his reason for appearing on podcasts, his reason for giving speeches and doing all the sort of things that Simon does. And, uh, you know, I think that that comes across. I've seen him in across, a, you know, a couple of different mediums now in book form, in speech form, in conversational form. And, I, and I, every time I've, I've come away with the feeling like, yeah, I think this guy is really following true to what he's saying that the, the advice he's giving to other people. So uh, it can be a tad confusing, the book with all the, the whys, the whats, the hows, um, but I found it tremendously insightful. So I'm giving the book Start With Why by Simon Sinek a tentative 8 out of 10. And it's tentative because the problem with self-help books and these sort of inspirational books is they can give you this momentary you know, lasting for a week sort of, yeah, hi, let's do it. Let's go out. Let's do it. But after a while that can fade away. And, you know, the problem with this sort of book is all of it's sort of theoretical in the mind mindset type of thing. And not so much of it is implementable. You go do this and you write it in this certain way, or you do this sort of thing. So I'm quite enjoying it. Like at this very present moment, I said, wow, yeah, I'm getting a lot of help from this, but let, let's see in a month's time and I'll, I'll get back to you on, on whether it's, I still think it's an eight out of 10 book in that stage. So what's something pragmatic I'm going to take from it? Well, I'm already trying to implement his golden circle into my life. So um, I feel I'm lacking a little bit the clarity of the why. I know the what I'm doing. I'm creating podcasts. I'm doing you know things with my family. I'm focusing on these sort of things, how I'm doing it. So uh, I'm doing that by, you know, connecting ideas that I read across in different books. I'm ha doing that by having deep conversations with a lighthearted touch with my friend Juan. I'm doing it by all these sorts of different things. But then the why, why am I doing all these? And I'm just going to give you like a, a rough, uh, a rough copy of what it is. And I think it's, I want to make the world a better place than when I entered it. And, but to do that, I think I need to fix myself first. So I need to focus on myself, make, make myself to the point where I can help others because just like everyone else, I, I've, got, I've got my own problems, I've got my own mental blocks, my, my own physical things, you know, things going on in my life. So I really want to show and not tell, show how, how I'm going about and fixing my life and then sort of spreading that out in whatever form I can. So uh, it's, it's funny, I... Yeah, I won't get into it too deep. That, that's a, a conversation for the podcast, I think. So that's it for today. What did you think of the book, Start With Why by Simon Sinek? Do you think it's a little bit too fluffy, which it can be, or do you think it actually has some real great advice and it can help you? I'd love to know what you think. Um, leave a comment wherever you're listening to this or go to our Instagram page and you can leave or DM, DM me there, whatever you want to do. And yeah, I really hope you're having a fantastic day. I hope you find your why and that is it. Current out.